Our third witness is Douglas Murray, who's director of the Centre for Social Cohesion and I think it's fair to say not a fan of multiculturalism, but was um, Cameron exaggerating when he described it very flatly as a failure? No, if anything, he was understating the case. Uh, multiculturalism as a state policy has had a terrible impact on the lives of very many people, including a, a couple of generations of British people who should have expected and should have received better from the British state. Ken Malik. Is it really multiculturalism you're worried about, or is it Muslims? No, it's multiculturalism. I'd say if it was just Muslims. Well, you have said it's just Muslims. Uh, let me quote you from a speech you gave a, a couple of years ago. Do I ago really have to be lectured which... by a member of the Revolutionary Communist Party about what I've said or haven't said? Well, let, let me quote... I mean, really, let, let do me, I have to be? Let me quote you. Um, I, I presume if you'd like to ask me questions, I'll tell you my words in my own words indeed, now. Indeed, indeed. Uh, and presumably you're in this programme to answer my question, so let, let, me answer, uh, let me ask you a question. You said a couple of weeks ago, uh, a couple of years ago, that all immigration into Europe from Muslim countries must stop. Yes. Conditions for Muslims in Europe must be made harder across the board. Now, that sounds not like a critique of multiculturalism, but a, a vendetta against Muslims. No, if you'd bothered to read anything that I have written, you'd learn something different, which is that if you uh, look at the speech, that speech, and if you look at other things I've written, it's a perfectly clear point. I believe that there's a level of mass immigration beyond which you cannot integrate, integrate people in society. That is the level which this country got to some time ago. Governments are now realising this, the Labour government started to realise this, the Conservative government is now realising this. Uh, that level of in immigration was far too high. It was, at the end of it, uh, combined with a period in which uh, minority groups, including Muslims, and I think most prominently Muslims, made extra demands from society. Not equality, not just putting up with the same things the rest of us have to put up with, like, for instance, having our views offended, having our feelings offended, having to put up with members of the Revolutionary Communist Party saying things and so on, but by the fact that certain minority groups decided that they should have extra rights, such as the right not to have their religious opinions offended, the right to uh, uh, c claim money from the state, to be themselves, money from the state to protect themselves from criticism, and so on. That has been an incredibly divisive policy, and I hate to tell you, but I'm not the only person who's noticed it. Uh, no, I, I've noticed it too, but my point is that you've noticed in a very different way. You talk about the questions of equality, and as someone who's read your work uh, at length, let me quote from you something else you said, which is that um, Muslims who condone violence against the West uh, should be deported back to their, to their countries of origin. But you also carry on to say that if they were born in the West, they should be deported back to the countries of origin of their parents or grandparents. In other words, if you're a Christian, you'd have full rights of citizenship. If you're a Muslim, you would not have those rights of citizenship. Are, no. you, not, are you not singling you, you, out Muslims for unequal treatment? No, what you're doing, uh, Kenan, I think probably because you have a vendetta, because I wrote a review of your book, which was very critical, is that you've decided that you, uh, you're going to seize one speech, by the way, the same speech you, you uh, quoted earlier, which suggests to me you've never read more than a few thousand words of anything I've written. But you've quoted from the same speech and pretended it's a different speech. And what you've quoted is uh, quite something different, which is this. I do believe, and I think many other people believe, and I think it's a perfectly acceptable belief, that if people uh, hate this state, hate this country, hate Britain, uh, take advantage of it, plot against it, plan to murder people in it, then they should have no part in it. This is a perfectly respectable theory. It's a perfectly respectable opinion. Uh, President Sarkozy in France has said a similar thing. This is just what people like you do from the extreme left, and you try to pretend that anyone who has ordinary conservative with a small c opinions has a view that's beyond the pale. I think most of your views are beyond the pale, but I don't think you have to be out of the debate. But I don't see why treating Muslims differently from the way you treat Christians. You wouldn't deport cr Christians, you would deport uh, Muslims even if they were born in this country. I do not see how that is equality. No, uh, we come back to that. You're not, you haven't even bothered to ask me about multiculturalism. You just decided to go on a personal vendetta, and that's your own call, it's your own waste of time. But uh, if you look at the situation, you look at that speech, if you look at other things I've written, what I say is that if people from a minority group, people who have just come to this country, people who have themselves sometimes come in um, in recent years, decide they're going to spend time in this country plotting against this country, this country should not have to be a birth for them to do so. That is perfect common sense to most people, other than perhaps you and your fringe ideas. Uh, Matthew Turner. I'd like to go back to, to multiculturalism, if, 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 if we can, because you, you said that it had done terrible, terrible harm, that it's the worst mistake that the state has committed uh, in recent times. Uh, I'm kind of quite interested in this. I mean, 
Do you think that the, 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 the greatest duty we have to young people, for example, is to kind of to manufacture a kind of a certainty and consistency in their national culture uh, for them to feel uh, pride in that? Or is it actually to give them an ability to appreciate and understand people from other cultures? Which, which do you think is the most important attribute for us to be developing? In the most important thing that Britain and other countries can do now is to do what the German Muslim writer, uh, Bassam Tibi, described as to form a light culture, a core culture, a culture which allows all sorts of variations with certain limits, uh, all sorts of variations, but which are united by a common theme, rather like in a piece of music of the theme and variations. The, th the variations on the theme only work if people know the theme. I think that one of the worst things, so by taking this entirely culturally relative... Can I get this right? We, we, I just, because I'm now trying to clarify. Mm. You, you, we have to create a new... It's not an existing culture. No, no, no it's, it's, an, an, it's, it's a new... It's, it's an existing culture, but we have to be who, able to reassert it, reinforce it. We have to educate people. Instead of educating young people in hating or distrusting their country, hating and distrusting their past, is to also teach them, at least in a complementary fashion, some of the good things about their culture. Teach the common narrative of this country. That is something that people of any background could, right. could come into, could be part I, I of. I think... I, I wonder whether your, your, your suspicion of multiculturalism is this, that you... It's not a suspicion. The, 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 you feel that it, to, for people to understand that other people have different values, different beliefs, different gods, is somehow to make them feel more insecure about their own culture and values. And I don't see why that's the case. Let me, for example, present to you the fact that most opinion polls show that, that, that white people who live in very diverse areas are more relaxed about diversity this than white people who live in predominantly white areas. Yes. So it seems that the people Pardon who live in, multi, in this kind of multicultural yes. hubbub no, 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 are quite no, kind no, of relaxed you're, you're, and happy about it. You're doing the classic thing of mixing these things up, if I may say so. That is a, an example of a multiracial area you're talking about, not a multicultural area. Multicultural, well, multiracial, multi hang on, hang on, may I, just, may I just finish at least one point? Multiracialism, pluralism, having people of different backgrounds in society is something that I and most of us are, uh, uh, support. But as, 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 we've tried, as we've tried to uh, stress several times now, there has to be a unifying idea, a unifying core to that culture, which is, in our, in our case, in Britain, Britishness. There are all sorts of debates to be had around that. But the idea that you do not assert a common value, a set of common cultures, a set of, a set of, sorry, of common values, means that for many young people in this society, there is absolutely no imperative whatsoever to be a part of this society. Society doesn't even encourage it, doesn't ask them to be. And in that situation, we should not be surprised that some people not only turn against our society, but themselves fall prey to radical and extremely dish, uh, vicious ideologies, which are, I think, to the detriment of people of all faiths, all backgrounds, all races, all creeds. Douglas Murray, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.